Hi, this is Robertson of Pour One Malt doing another label lesson. Sometimes there's information on your Scotch whiskey label telling you what kind of cask or casks your Scotch whiskey's been in. So I'm going to talk about that today. I'm going to define some terms, some abbreviations, and talk about the different kind of casks you might get in Scotch whiskey. So the first thing to know is that there's a lot of different sizes of casks that are used around the world for wine and other spirits. Now, here's an image of uh, different sizes of casks that are used around the world. Now, the one that's the most familiar to most people is the American bourbon cask, right? Because by law, American whiskey has to be aged in brand new oak barrels. That's all American whiskey except for corn whiskey. All the rest have to be in new oak barrels, and they're only allowed to be used once. So after it's used once, there's a lot of these barrels laying around that can't be used again. So Scottish distilleries buy those up, but they also buy lots of different casks from around the world that have different spirits in them. So here's the image again showing some of these different casks. Now Scotland obviously uses the leftover bourbon barrels, but we also use butts that had sherry in them, barriques that had wine in them, pipes that had port in them, and so on. For Scotch whiskey, you can buy these different barrels from all around the world. There's a lot of different ones used in Scotch whiskey. Scotland has been recycling and upcycling casks for more than 100 years. Casts in Scotland are used over and over again, and when they start falling apart, they're repaired and they're used again. It's not uncommon for casts to be used five, six times in Scotland, or even more than that. So the size of the cask really matters as far as the wood contact with the whiskey or the spirit that's in the cask. The smaller the cask, the more wood contact the spirit gets, so it will more quickly develop color, develop flavors from that cask. If you're laying it down for a short period of time, like two years, five years, 10 years, you might want a smaller cask to get that wood contact. But if you're going to lay down your whiskey for 30 years, 40 years, you might want a larger cask so that you slow down that wood contact and it doesn't take effect so, so dramatically. All right, now a couple of terms you might see on your Scotch whiskey label. The first is matured. Now, this is a bottle of Hazelburn. It's 13 years old, and on the back it says matured in bourbon casks. Because it uses the word matured, that means it's spent the entire time in these bourbon casks. So it was 13 years old. It's been 13 years in the bourbon casks that it was aged in. The other term you might see on your Scotch whiskey label is finish or finished, right? This one says tequila cask finish. So when it was first made and first cask it was put in, it was a different cask. And in this case, it was a bourbon cask it was put in. And then after a few years, they transferred it from the bourbon cask into a tequila cask, which is where they finished it. Now, finish means it was in that cask for somewhere between two months and two years, usually not more than two years, usually not less than two months. And you're not limited to one finishing. They can finish it several times in several casks if they feel like it. It's up to the distillery. But in this case, this one was put in a tequila cask, and that's where it was finished before it was bottled. So what are the rules in Scotland as far as using casks are concerned. There's a wide variety of casks that are allowed to be used in Scotland. You can use new oak like they do in America in Scotland, and you can also use oak that's been used before by other spirits, as we've already talked about. There's a few things that aren't allowed, though. If that cask had stone fruits in it, and stone fruits are things like peaches, cherries, that sort of thing, you're not allowed to use that cask. Or if the cask has had extra flavors or, or sweeteners added to it. So like in the case of a gin, where you've put extra flavors into the spirit, that cask is not loose. You, you couldn't use a gin cask to make Scotch whiskey. But you're allowed to use lots of other casks, which we do in Scotland. We use ex-bourbon, ex-rye, ex-sherry, ex-port, uh, wine, uh, mescal, tequila, rum. There's a lot of casks that can be used in Scotland. And I've got an interesting finishing story for you. Uh, back a few years ago, like 15 years ago, there were some Germans that bought a cask of Brooklady, and it was 14 years old. And they decided to finish it for three months in a herring barrel. Now, they named it Fischke, 
no surprise there. Um, and I got a taste of it about 10 years ago at a whiskey festival. And it was as bad as you can imagine it would be. It was absolutely horrible. They they <laughs> completely ruined that Brooklady. Uh And that wouldn't be legal in Scotland. You wouldn't be able to use something like a herring barrel. That wouldn't, wouldn't fit the requirements. So a few terms that you might see on a label. You might see it say virgin oak or Scottish oak. In Scotland, if you use a cask for the first time and it's never been used before, like they do in America, we call that a virgin oak cask. And it can be Scottish oak, it can be European oak, it can be an American oak. There's a wide variety. There's actually 600 species of oak. And I'll do a separate video just talking about oak. So sometimes on the label, you might see first fill. That's on this label. If it's a first fill, that means it's the first time it's been filled in Scotland. It does not mean it's virgin oak and has never been used before. It means it had something else in it. In this case, it's a first fill ex oloroso, which is a sherry. All right, another term you might see on a label is STR cask. That's what's on this label. STR stands for shaved, toasted, and recharred. This is a new method of taking a cask that's been used a lot and is a bit knackered and old, and they bring it new life. They shave it, they toast it, they rechar it, and it's used again. And it's almost like a fresh new cask. This is very popular with uh, new whiskey, young whiskey. A lot of the new distilleries are using it because you get really, really fast uh, wood contact with your whiskey. Another abbreviation you might see is PX. This one says it was in fresh PX Firkins. Now, a firkin is a really, really small cask, and PX, that stands for Pedro Jimenez. That's a type of sherry that comes from Spain, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's thick and rich and used a lot in uh, Scotch whiskey. Another abbreviation you might see is HTMC. That's what's on this label. That stands for heavy toast, medium char. Again, that's the charring of the cask. Another term you might see is hogshead. That's what's on this label. It says it was in X bourbon hogsheads, and then its second cask was a first fill X Oloroso hogshead, right? So hogshead is another size of cask. It's bigger than a barrel. It's usually made from the oak of a barrel, but it's larger in size, and their hogsheads are used a lot for Scotch whiskey. All right, so hopefully that was helpful information about some of the different cask information you can get from your Scotch whiskey. In any case, enjoy your dram slash.